हेलो लर्नर्स टुडे इन दिस सेशन वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट इक्विलिब्रियम इक्विलिब्रियम और अ स्टेट वेयर इन द बिजनेस हैज ए टेंडेंसी टू रिमेन फॉर सम टाइम द कंज्यूमर हैज ए टेंडेंसी टू रिमेन देयर फॉर सम टाइम दैट इज कंसिडर्ड टू बी द स्टेट ऑफ इक्विलिब्रियम द स्टेट ऑफ इक्विलिब्रियम unlike the physical sciences is not the inert stage rather it is a stage of absence of uh, movement uh, it's not the absence of movement rather it is the absence in the rate of movement the rate of movement has to be there the movement continues it does not stop the economic activities do not stop but the economic activities continue at a fixed rate there is no change in the rate that is considered to be the state of equilibrium so study of equilibrium in economics is very important now one can easily imagine as to what is going to be the point of equilibrium the point of equilibrium will obviously be a point where there is no change in the rate of movement and when there is no change in the rate of movement then what does it mean it means the business is earning the maximum or the consumer is having the maximum satisfaction so where this is this is in other words this is a point of maximization the point of maximum where the business has the maximum advantage the profit is the maximum at that point the business would like to uh, continue its production at the same rate there will be absence of change in the rate of movement where it is maximum so equilibrium normally means you tie a weight with a thread and give it oscillations and where it when it stops when there is no movement it is known as the state of equilibrium in physical sciences but in economics is it, it is not so the economic activities never stop those activities have to go on that means consumption will go on production will go on manufacturing will go on everything all the activities will remain continuous but the difference is that the rate of movement will be the same so this is what is equilibrium and as i said a little earlier where do you find that the rate will not change that is the point of maximum so wherever there is maximum profit at that point of time the rate will not change it will continue to be as it is so equilibrium does not denote the inert stage rather it is the stage of movement now next important thing is in economics it is not important to know the equilibrium rather it is more important to know the tendency towards equilibrium it tells us as to how the movement towards equilibrium takes place what are those forces which take one to the state of equilibrium so equilibrium in itself is not so important but the tendency of movement towards equilibrium is important and in real life the situation of equilibrium is usually not found the situation of equilibrium is not usually seen but always there is a tendency of a movement towards the state of equilibrium because that tells us as to how the business will be maximizing its resources because it is the point of maximum wherever there is maximum gain that is the point of equilibrium so naturally everybody has that target movement towards maximum so in this process of movement towards maximum what are the forces how does one reach there all this one gets to know with the help of equilibrium all the economic units make a tireless effort to reach the equilibrium every unit tries its level best to gain the maximum 
to get the maximum and whenever there is maximum there will be a tendency to remain there for some time and that is the state of equilibrium since it tells the direction it is also known as the compass of economics compass is a, an instrument which shows the direction this is north this is east this is west this is south similarly equilibrium analysis gives the direction of an economic unit to a student of economics so that is why they call it the compass of the economics so though the equilibrium is not fined but the tendency or direction is very very important it is a very important tool of economic analysis in economic analysis this tool is used quite often to study the direction and to study that state of affairs so this is what the equilibrium is now uh, what are the types of equilibrium there are three types of equilibrium stable unstable and neutral and there are other types also but then this is one type of equilibrium which is one of the most popular under stable equilibrium the forces of demand and supply are in their natural state natural state means demand curve is negatively sloped curve and supply curve is a positively sloped curve and wherever they intersect that is the point which is the point of equilibrium how because at this point whatever is demanded the same is being supplied or whatever is the supply the same is being demanded by the consumers and the equilibrium is created now supposing this equilibrium is disturbed on account of any factors on account of some temporary disturbing factors the equilibrium is disturbed then very soon the market forces will start uh, their play and the play of market forces will restore the equilibrium to the original point and the fact that it is restored very soon it is known as stable equilibrium on the contrary when it comes to unstable equilibrium the unstable equilibrium if disturbed once then goes on disturbing in the same direction in this kind of an equilibrium the position of curves is rather not normal it is abnormal and in the abnormal shape if equilibrium point is disturbed say upwards then it will have a tendency to move upwards further similarly if the disturbance is towards the lower side down side then it will have a tendency to move further towards down this is the unstable equilibrium and regarding the neutral equilibrium the neutral is the one wherein there are some oscillations there are some movements but these movements do not have the capacity to disturb it too much and there is no expectation of any future shocks so therefore this neutral equilibrium tells us that the movement remains within a within a limit either with angle to quantity or with angle to price both ways it remains very limited so during a limited range the movement is neutral either neutral towards price or neutral towards quantity in in two directions like in one price range the quantity may be either oq or oq1 or oq2 but then this range is very small very limited and there is no scope of further movement we'll see these with the help of a diagram in this diagram the situation of a stable equilibrium has been denoted you will notice that there is a demand curve which is a negatively sloped line there is a supply curve which is a positively sloped line this demand curve shows that at these individual prices this much of quantity will be demanded and this supply curve shows that at these individual prices this much of quantity will be supplied 
Now demand curve and supply curve they intersect at point E. At this point, what do you find? That at OP price, OQ quantity is being demanded and the same is being supplied. So whatever is the demand at OP price, the same is being supplied. That is OQ. OQ is the quantity demanded and OQ is the quantity supplied. Since this is a normal situation, therefore, this is a stable equilibrium. And why do I call it a stable? Because you see, if there is a disturbance, supposing for any reason, price increases from P to P1. Now what will happen? Just notice, you draw a perpendicular line which touches D and S, that is demand curve and supply curve at two points. Supposing these points are a and B. This is A and this is B. Now you will notice that the demand is less and supply is more. If I draw a perpendicular line, it will make the situation even more clear. See, OQ1 is the demand and OQ2 is the supply. So just note that demand is less and supply is more. When demand is less and supply is more, what will happen to the prices? The prices will have a tendency to fall because there is no demand or there is less demand. So prices will fall and they will have a tendency to get restored at E. Similarly, if the price somehow falls to P2, then what will happen? You notice that supply curve is being touched at this point and demand curve is being touched at this point, which means demand is more, supply is less. So when demand is too much and supply is less, the prices will go up. You take any product in the market, if supply is less and demand is more, then there will be a tendency for the prices to go up. So both ways what you notice is that when the price increases, then it has a tendency to come back to the original price that is E, that is P. And similarly, if the price falls down to P2 because of some temporary disturbances in the market, then they have a tendency to go back to the same price P and get restored at the same point E. This is known as the case of stable equilibrium. Similarly, if you draw a diagram of unstable equilibrium, then the curves will be reversed and then there will be a tendency of movement further in the same direction. Regarding neutral equilibrium also a diagram can be drawn. But since, uh, as I said in the beginning itself, equilibrium in itself is not important. What is more important is the tendency towards equilibrium. The study of those forces which take you to the equilibrium. And as I said earlier, what is this equilibrium? Equilibrium is the point of maximum, where there is maximum advantage, where there is maximum profit, there only the business has a tendency to remain for some time. Similarly, demand and supply also, they remain the same because there it is maximum utility to the consumers and maximum profit to the suppliers. So this situation usually doesn't happen, but it tells us a direction. It tells us a direction. Like you see on a carom board, those dices are placed at different places. Once a strike is taken, then a new equilibrium is created. That is unstable. And when the original equilibrium get disturbed, that is known as the stable equilibrium. So this is stable, unstable and neutral equilibrium. These are the three 
functional types of equilibrium there are some other types of equilibrium also we'll take this with this only so one type of equilibrium is stable unstable and neutral another classification of equilibrium is single and multiple equilibrium uh, one is single other one is multiple single all is also known as unique unique equilibrium so single equilibrium or unique equilibrium is one and the same thing and the other one is multiple so when in the market only one equilibrium is created uh, because of the forces of interplay of market forces then that is known as single or unique equilibrium say for example if edible oil on a particular day and at a particular period is available for rupees 200 a kg and whatever quantity is available the same quantity is being bought over by the buyers this is known as single or unique equilibrium but supposing there are different equilibriums created at different prices say for example government wants that this edible oil sh should sell at rupees 150 per kg then in that case the government may resort to subsidies or to some other techniques with the help of those techniques another equilibrium can be created so this is the case of multiple equilibrium different equilibriums are created at different prices because of, because of intervention this is known as single or multiple equilibrium so this was this is the second classification when we have single equilibrium or multiple equilibrium single equilibrium is also known as unique equilibrium as i said why unique because this has got one unique feature that is how it is known as unique equilibrium and it is established at one price at one time in one market but in the same market if because of intervention of the government or maybe because of the intervention of the market uh, forces because of the intervention of trade unions there may be many forces which operate in the market so on account of those disturbances if another equilibrium is also created then it is known as multiple equilibrium now the next classification is short term and long term equilibrium there are these are the two important time periods one is the short term other one is the long term now what is short term in short term the supply is limited to the shop and maximum to the go down which is nearby it cannot be extended further in the long term the supply situation changes altogether demand also changes but supply mostly changes like orders can be placed more material can be produced and additional demand can be taken care of so short term period analysis is very important in economics if it is a short period of time and equilibrium is created in that period then it is known as short period equilibrium similarly the equilibrium which gets established and remains there for a longer period of time it is known as long period equilibrium but in the short period equilibrium the supply remains fixed supply doesn't change much it can be adjusted a little bit with the help of the go down or with the help of taking material from some other suppliers like kind of borrowing taken from some other shop some other supplier not beyond that but in the long run it is possible to increase the output also the output is increased and accordingly the demands are met so this is the time based classification short term equilibrium and long term equilibrium then there is yet another category static equilibrium and dynamic equilibrium static refers to stationary state of economy so when the state of economy is stationary there are there are stationary there are no movements it is static and when the stage of economy is very fast moving this is known as dynamic 
in a dynamic economy the parameters change very fast in a static economy the parameters do not change and therefore the equilibrium which is created under the static conditions is known as the static equilibrium and the equilibrium which is created under the dynamic conditions of the economy is known as the dynamic equilibrium and finally partial or particular and general equilibrium this is yet another classification of equilibrium one is partial equilibrium or particular equilibrium this is the equilibrium related to one industry or one firm so when the equilibrium of a firm is studied when a when the equilibrium of an industry is studied this is known as partial this is known as particular equilibrium but when the study of the entire economy is made that is known as general so these are the different types of equilibrium but the most important functional classification of equilibrium is stable unstable and neutral the other types single and multiple short term and long term static and dynamic partial and general these classes also exist but these classes Uh, are uh, for us to understand the phenomena and to analyze the economic issues with the help of this phenomena so this is what the equilibrium is now a quick recap what is equilibrium equilibrium is the state of absence in the rate of movement where the, is it achieved the, at that point where there is the tendency of maximization the equilibrium point is not important rather movement towards equilibrium is important the direction is important so this is all about equilibrium thank you